Good evening, everyone. Please be seated. Welcome, and thank you for being with us this evening. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the College of Nursing, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this program and reception, recognizing the May 2013 graduates of the baccalaureate, master's, and doctoral nursing programs at East Tennessee State University. My name is Dr. Sheila Smith. I'm Associate Dean for Academic Programs at the College of Nursing. Tonight's pinning ceremony is a significant event in the College of Nursing and in the lives of these men and women who are marking their transition into professional nursing or the practice of nursing at a more advanced level. Before we begin our program, I'd like to acknowledge some of our guests and participants. Please join me first in recognizing the faculty of the College of Nursing. Faculty, please stand. Thank you. A person who deserves our special recognition tonight is our pianist, Mr. Scott Vaughn. Mr. Vaughn is also director of student services in the college and has advised many of these graduates. Recognition and thank you are due to staff members in the college who have worked so hard to assure that this ceremony is a special one for the graduate. Members of the staff, please stand. Thank you. We also would like to thank Wellmont Health Services for their gift of a rose to each graduate. And we want to express our appreciation to Mountain States Health Alliance for the flower arrangements at center stage. During the program, of course, we'll recognize and honor our graduates and introduce members of the platform party. Tonight, we especially want to acknowledge those persons whose support and understanding have truly made it possible for each of you graduates to complete your program. Graduates, please rise and face the audience, your family, your special friends, and show them your appreciation for all the support they've provided. <laughs> Dr. Wendy Nearing, Dean of the College, will now bring her greetings. Good evening. Today we are gathered to honor the nursing class of May 2013 our baccalaureate masters and our first three DNP graduates. We are also celebrating Nurses Week. This is the 58th year of the nursing program at East Tennessee State University. Thank you all for joining us for the celebration. Today is a memorable day in the lives of each of our graduates. Today each graduate will be recognized for their years of perseverance, faith, and growth and we will celebrate lifelong friendships that have been formed. This event will be symbolized by the receipt of a pin and in the case of the DMP graduate, a hood. This is a time of dreams realized and new dreams formed. You are entering a period in nursing's history in which nursing will make a bigger difference in providing quality health care to all Americans. I like to think of this time as nurse first, a time when the entry to health care begins with a nurse. During your student years, many of you prepared for this by being student or class leaders, being active in a nursing organization, by going to Nashville to meet our legislators, volunteering, and making new changes in your practice based on knowledge and skills that you learned. Your efforts in the future may involve your practice to others, while for some it will mean leadership positions in agencies, organizations, and maybe in political office. Today, I welcome each of you, whether you are a graduate or the family and friends of a graduate, as we celebrate this milestone in your life and the beginning of a new chapter. Know that I speak for each of your faculty and the staff in saying that we are all so very proud of you. You are an ETSU nurse. 
It is also my pleasure tonight to recognize Dr. Randy Wyckoff, Dean of the College of Public Health. He is sitting out in the audience here. I also want to recognize that his wife is a nurse. Also, I'd like to recognize Dr. Jane Jones, Associate Vice President for Health Affairs and Chief of Staff, and Mrs. Donna Nolan, wife of the President and also a nurse. <laughs> and now I would like to introduce to you Dr. Brian Nolan, ninth President of East Tennessee State University. We are very honored to have Dr. Nolan with us today and to give you a welcome and congratulatory remarks. Dr. Nering, thank you. Thank you all and good evening. Uh, on behalf of our more than 15,500 students and 2,200 faculty and staff, I want to welcome everyone in the audience to this event this evening. Tonight is the culmination of a dream. Tonight represents the culmination of years of investments in the individuals who are here before me today. This is a shared dream and a shared journey, and to those in the audience who helped to make this possible, as a university, we extend our thanks to you. Tonight, more than 100 new nurses and advanced practice nurses enter our healthcare system. Tonight, we make history as we graduate the first three students from our Doctor of Nurse Practice program. I'm humbled to think of the lives that will be touched by our class of 2013. Think of the lives that will be made better, of the lives that will be saved. Think of the hope, the comfort, and the reassurances that each of you will offer to your patients in the years to come. The men and women seated before me will do more than just make a difference. They, in fact, will be differences. Graduates, most of you will be in a position in which individuals will entrust you with their care on a daily basis. There are few careers where a profession is given that sacred trust, that privilege, Nurses are empowered with sacred trust on a daily basis. And I know this as well as anyone in the room because my wife Donna is a women's health nurse practitioner. I've witnessed her dedication to the profession. I've witnessed her patient care and I've witnessed the care that she has given to individuals across the state. I've developed an even deeper appreciation for nursing and for all that you do through watching my wife on a daily basis. This evening, the pin that you receive symbolizes your acceptance into a hallowed profession. Tomorrow, you'll walk across the stage, shake my hand, and receive your degree. And, and don't squeeze too hard. I'm shaking 1,750 tomorrow. I want to be able to, to, to write on Sunday. You have my abiding respect as you become graduates of our great institution. I offer you my best. May you carry your blue and gold with you as you move into your profession. Godspeed, and it is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Wilsey Bishop, Vice President for Health Affairs and our Chief Operating Officer. Thank you, Dr. Nolan. What a wonderful occasion this is. Uh, there is absolutely no better way to conclude National Nurses Week than to have a nursing pinning ceremony. Uh, it's a wonderful time to celebrate and it's a time to reflect on the difference that you make to healthcare today. It's pretty obvious as I look out in the audience that we have a number of very happy family members here tonight. Uh, you've already recognized them but I hope that as you go through this weekend of celebration that you will realize that they too are celebrating with you. They have probably contributed much more than you'll ever realize to your success that you're experiencing tonight. So realize that as you celebrate that they are too. Uh, this is an opportunity for people to say they're nurses and as a nurse, and I am a nurse, uh, I am certainly aware of the rigorous study that's been required by the profession. My nursing education has been invaluable to me. Uh, throughout my whole career, first as a clinical nurse, uh, later as a nurse educator, and now as a university administrator, uh, the foundations that I received in my baccalaureate nursing program and my master's program in nursing have been invaluable. Some of you will be at the bedside. Uh, others will choose to be in the community. Some of you will become educators and others practitioners. But whatever path you choose, you should know that as graduates of ETSU's College of Nursing, you can be confident that you have an outstanding education. 
and that you will be well prepared for your chosen roles. I have every expectation that you will be leaders in our profession. I want to take a moment to express um, a, a thank you also to your faculty and staff. Uh, they have been integral to your education. Uh, and I think you'll find that as you go through your career, you'll remember many times what a particular faculty member said to you. And it'll make a difference, perhaps, in a life or death situation. Be sure and thank them, too, for what they've done for you. And finally today, as you plan to be alumni of our College of Nursing, I want you to think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and know that it's very important for you to give back. Uh, give back to your college, give back to those who will be following, mentor those who will be uh, in the same place that you are today, knowing that they too will benefit from the knowledge that you've gained along the way. Graduation is really a commencement. It's the commencement of your professional journey. I know that you as a class of 2013 uh, will take that journey seriously. I know you will do great things. I know you will make a difference in people's lives. I wish you success. I wish you happiness. And I extend my heartiest congratulations. Thank you. It is now my honor to introduce our keynote speaker for today. It is with great pride that I introduce Dr. Sheila Smith, of course she's already introduced herself to you, our Associate Dean for Academic Programs. Dr. Smith has been with us just short of one year. She came to ETSU from the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire where she was a professor and assistant dean for evaluation and strategic initiatives in the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. She received her PhD in nursing from the University of Minnesota with a minor in feminist studies. She received both her BSN and MSN degrees from the University of Wisconsin at Eau Claire. Her master's specialization was as an adult health clinical nurse specialist, and later she received a post-master's certificate as an adult health nurse practitioner. Her research interests include women's experiences of victimizing sexualization and healing, and LGBT healthcare needs and concerns, among others. In the past, she spent two months as a visiting professor in China and Vietnam. She is a CCNE accreditation site visitor and is currently serving on the National CCNE Accreditation Review Committee. In her spare time, she loves skiing, running, and many other sports. She has brought her evaluation and accreditation ex expertise to us and has already paid great dividends. In the short time that she has been here, she has been involved in two sites visits for the DNP program, welcome visitors from China and Africa, assisted faculty in finalizing our revised undergraduate curriculum, and worked with her fellow associate deans in the Academic Health Science Center in implementing and evaluating the pilot interprofessional graduate student project, among other things, including a recent accreditation trip to Beirut, Lebanon. It is my great pleasure to work with her and to introduce her to you today, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Nearing. Good evening, nursing graduates, family members, friends, colleagues, esteemed guests. Congratulations to you. We're very proud of your accomplishments. As you mark this important transition from student to professional nurse or to your next level of academic and practice specialization, this is an important day for faculty as well. Today, we celebrate our baccalaureate, master's, and doctor of nursing practice graduates. Our 115 BSN graduates represent the lifeblood of nursing. You will administer advanced treatments, facilitate complex family transitions, prevent errors and avert sentinel events, reconcile medications, and teach self-health management. You will prevent readmissions, identify and evaluate quality improvements, and ensure comfort, support, and safety under the most trying of human health experiences. 
Our MSN graduates represent the solid core of advanced prepared specialty nurses as nurse practitioners, nurse educators, and nurse administrators. You will teach new nurses, manage healthcare organizations, provide essential care for underprivileged populations, and participate in managing as much as 80 to 90 percent of primary care cases, achieving outstanding results. Our Doctor of Nursing Practice graduates, our first three, represent the leading edge of a powerful new paradigm in nursing and health care. Dr. Nurses, you will push back the barriers on nursing scope of practice, connect interdisciplinarily with computer scientists and patient flow modelers, integrate preventive care with risk reduction and research on self-health management, translate research into practice, and change the delivery of health care. Those of us here before you are deeply aware of the importance of the resource you represent. You are the future of nursing, the future of our discipline, the future of problem solving to meet national priorities for safe and effective care. And make no mistake about it, you will have a great abundance of complex problems to address within the messiness of human systems and healthcare needs. You are on the verge of terrific possibilities and opportunities there for you to accept as you choose. Nursing graduates, you are the human face of healthcare. Through the enactment of caring theory and a professionally adopted code of ethics, nursing practice focuses on affirming personhood, sustaining human dignity, and responding to others as persons of value. A caring theorist in nursing so, appropri so appropriately declare, professional nursing can never be rendered impersonally. The light that nursing shines on the world is the knowledge of living caring in the context of healthcare relationships, sustaining human connectedness and knowledge of person in the healthcare experience. Nursing graduates, you are the safe keepers of healthcare. Through deep knowledge of human health, skilled assessment, evidence-based anticipation of risk, timely intervention, and precise communication of complex needs, nurses maintain patient population and healthcare system safety in the face of unpredictability and ever-changing healthcare demands. Our job is to actualize that promise every day. Nursing graduates, you are the future of healthcare. You are among the 2.75 million nurses in the United States, including over 180,000 advanced practice registered nurses. We provide the fastest and most cost-effective strategy for meeting the health and health care needs of millions of Americans, providing primary care, chronic disease management, home care, and community-based nursing. We represent an essential ingredient for meeting the triple aims of health care reform. By our sheer numbers, the expertise we hold, nurses are the key to improving health care access, improving quality, and reducing health care costs. Your job is to advance these initiatives and claim them clearly as the domain of professional nursing. In my own career, I've been privileged to participate in incredible dimensions of human health. These have ranged from caring for critically ill persons and assisting them to negotiate the liminal regions between life and death leading and serving as volunteer nurse practitioner at our regional free clinic for persons without other health care alternatives. Seeing the power of research interviews become pattern identification therapy for women with devastating childhood experience of sex gender abuse and victimizing sexualization. And working with an LGBT community to identify best practices for highest quality health care encounters and to promote the healing connections of committed and engaged health care providers. I've also been privileged to visit numerous nursing programs for program review, participate in writing quality standards, meet with students and faculty across the nation, see their accomplishments, and witness firsthand the quality and contributions of nursing programs to the nation's health. We do good work. We need to make that work visible and known. I've just returned from visiting with nursing students, faculty, and practicing nurses in Beirut, Lebanon, an opportunity I never would have imagined as I graduated from my BSN program some 32 years ago. 
In Lebanon, as in much of the world, university-educated nurses are rare. They have before them the challenge of completely reforming and raising the stature of nursing as a profession. In Lebanon, baccalaureate graduates are the ones who will accomplish that goal. In that region of scarce resources, there are health care needs the likes of which we can barely even imagine here in the United States. We visited a dispensary where Syrian and Pakistani refugees required the most basic health care for acute and chronic conditions. Nutrition, vaccinations, antibiotics, antihypertensives, wound care, mental health management, and reproductive health. Nursing students were there to deliver that care, provide health education, and connect on the level of the human condition in a region of omnipresent political upheaval and geographic dislocations. Some of the women were veiled with very strict conventions, not only on who can provide care, but who can speak to whom, what kinds of questions can be asked, which health care topics can be explored, and what forms of touch are permitted. Interprofessional teams of health care providers had to discover how to effectively deliver that care. A little funny aside, some of you might relate to this. One of the baccalaureate graduating seniors said to me at one point, you have really good veins. <laughs> in China a few years ago, I was able to participate in what were perhaps one to two times per month hospice visits to bedridden, terminally ill patients. These were people who lived many floors up in high-rise apartments with no elevators, no secure doors, no barriers to prevent rodents or insects from entering, no refrigeration, no air conditioning, a wooden pallet without bedding, and no one but possibly a kindly neighbor to assist with the most basic of physiologic needs. Mobility, elimination, hygiene, pain control, food acquisition, hydration, and wound care. The level of deprivation was jolting, yet here it was greeted, here it was treated as an accepted condition. The nurse's visit was a humanizing gift, accepted graciously and with humility by the patient whose name I never knew. In a city of over 10 million people, the nurses at Jinan University First Overseas Hospital were able to manage this care for about 200 hospice patients. Graduates, you are the nurses who will reach out to the world. You are part of worldwide efforts to meet daunting human health care needs, with or without resources or access to technology, in modern or antiquated systems of care, with or without highly specialized teams of experts. We meet the basic needs and the advanced needs, and we do so with grace, humility, and appreciation for the intimate human connections that are forged. Nursing will challenge you, and it will change you. Nursing students and their faculty were at the finish line providing life and limb-saving care for explosion victims at the Boston Marathon. They had no idea what they would be called upon to do, thinking their work would be about rehydration, managing heat exhaustion, icing joints, or blister care. Instead, they were the immediately available, highly educated resource called into action to manage a shocking and completely unexpected mass casualty and human tragedy. Those nursing students' lives will never be the same. They will have been changed by that experience in ways inextricably connected to the very different and far more egregious changes of the persons to whom they provided care, but changed in deep and lasting ways nonetheless. My doctoral advisor and mentor, Dr. Margaret Newman, was one of the pioneers of nursing theory. She made me think harder and feel deeper than I ever imagined was possible as we explored the interstices of human health patterning and the mutually life-changing connectedness of nurse-patient relationships and health care. We examined the privilege of connecting intimately with another in processes of human health transitions, walking with them, and facilitating the process of discovering new meaning, new patterns, new identities of self and health. In the process, we received the gift of learning about dimensions of human experience that few others can comprehend, touching others' lives, and changing the nurse just as fully as the patient he or she serves. The work of nursing is work of the self, a rare and privileged connecting with others at a level of privacy and intimacy virtually unknown elsewhere in our modern world. Yet we employ science, technology, economics, politics, psychology, ethics, health policy, and research. We problem solve, we collaborate, analyze, we monitor, we investigate and we teach. 
We share our hearts, our skills, our hands, our minds, all in the service of the very real and immediate demands of the human health experience. Now it's your turn. In your career, you will see advances your faculty cannot even imagine. Give it all you've got, because mistakes matter. And successes do too. Be leaders, be innovators, be advocates for the best health care policy possible. Be part of the women and men who commit to highest quality best practices, most up-to-date knowledge, and most ethical professional demeanor. Nurses don't deliver health care. Nurses are health care. Be among those who make it the best. Do it with a deep and abiding thanks for which side of the bed you're standing on. With deep and abiding care for those you serve and the sacred trust you've been charged to uphold. The stakes are high. It matters that you commit to being the best at what you do. My very best wishes to you for full and meaningful careers in our beloved profession. Each of you have achieved much and justly deserve praise. At tonight's event, we especially want to recognize students who have distinguished themselves through outstanding service and academic performance during their nursing program. First, the graduates who have served their fellow nursing students through the college's peer tutor program. Students give very valuable time to tutor their classmates, thus promoting their success. Peer tutor students are noted by the filled circle symbol in your program. Peer tutor students, please stand and receive the recognition for your outstanding service. Thank you for your contributions. Other students have also distinguished themselves through exemplary academic achievement. A number of our baccalaureate and graduate students have been selected for membership in Sigma Theta Tau, an international honor society of nursing, in recognition of their scholarship, leadership, and commitment to nursing. These students are noted by a star symbol after their names in your program. Members of Sigma Theta Tau, would you please stand and be recognized? Congratulations on your accomplishment of membership in nursing's International Honor Society. We hope you will enjoy a lifetime of rewarding professional opportunities through your Sigma Theta Tau chapter. When they enter the nursing major, some of our students are selected for participation in the Honors in Discipline, Midway Honors Scholar, and University Honors Scholar programs. Working closely with faculty, honors students complete mentorship courses and senior theses. These students will be recognized as they cross the stage to be pinned. The mission of the National Student Nurses Association is to mentor professional development of future registered nurses and facilitate their entrance into the profession by education, leadership opportunities, and career guidance. Members of the Student Nursing Association who met rigorous criteria are awarded cords and their names will be recognized as they cross the stage. Dr. Nearing will now give her charge to the May 2013 class, followed by responses from Jason Nicholson from the undergraduate class and Jennifer Boggs for the graduate class. My charge to you tonight and in the future is to be an advocate for yourself, your patients, nursing, and all things that you value. The American Heritage Dictionary defines advocacy as one that argues for a cause, a supporter or defender, one that pleads in another behalf, or lawyer. It is easy to advocate for those who you love, your family and your friends, as you would defend them easily if anyone said a cross word or acted negatively. We have done that since an early age. We do that often unconsciously. It is harder to advocate for yourself, your patients, and nursing. Let's take yourself. I remember in the third grade, we were voting for a class representative for student council. I was running against my best friend. I didn't want to vote for myself. This was the first election I participated in, so I voted for her, and I lost by that vote. <laughs> I use that example because we find it hard to promote ourselves. But I want you to learn that skill if you do not have it. Most of you already have a position, but some of you do not. When you interview, you need to sell yourself. 
make others believe that you are the best person for that position. Later, I hope that you will be involved in writing articles, grant proposals, and or program proposals. There will be some group of individuals that will read your work and decide that they want to choose you. When I was a doctoral student, I applied for a federal pre-doctoral research award. The application required a letter of support from my advisor. When I asked her to write it, she said that I should write it for her and she would edit it. At first I thought, you are lazy and just, you just don't want to do this. But in fact, I realized what she was asking me to do was to think that I knew myself best and I best knew what I wanted to propose in that grant proposal. So what better way for me to help her write that letter of support by me writing it and saying what I could do best. Not only will you be in a position to promote yourself through writing, but also through the people you know. It will be important for you to get to know a number of people from different disciplines, organizations, and geographic locations. My world used to just encircle my hometown, but now I literally consider it to be the world because I know people from around the world. Knowing a wide variety of people will help you as you venture into new positions, including leadership positions. Never limit yourself. Take risks, and when you fail, learn from it and try again. We have already talked to you in your classes in clinical situations that you must always advocate for your patient and their family in many cases. This is a vulnerable time in their lives and it is important to help each and every patient to achieve optimal health. Such advocacy may take the form of speaking to the physician, arranging home services, helping the patient to plan for death, and helping family members help the patient. This role is at the heart of nursing and involves both the art and science of nursing. You may also indirectly advocate for your patients. As you may know, my expertise is in the area of intellectual and developmental disabilities. For many years, I was a member of the local chapter of a Down Syndrome Support Group. This led to me for opportunities to conduct research and to present my findings at national meetings. I also made many good friends that are still with me today. Finally, you should always advocate for nurses and for nursing. Such advocacy can take place in your place of employment, locally for a health issue, statewide to speak your mind about a piece of legislation, or nationally to defend patients' rights, defend the need for health care for all Americans, and or to hold national office as a politician or in a national organization. The opportunities to do so are limitless. Your faculty and I have talked a lot this past year about the need to defend nursing in this state to prevent limitations placed on our scope of practice. I used to believe that I didn't have to get involved. Other people would do this and I could quietly support them. It is important to be involved. I have told you for a number of years, this is a wonderful time for nursing, that there are more opportunities for you than at any time in our history. But the breadth of these opportunities will not happen if you sit quietly. We had a similar opportunity in the 70s and the 80s, but nurses did not demand to be at the table to be heard on the issues and the opportunities went away. We have that opportunity again. Don't let this happen to you. Healthcare is changing rapidly. We can project today what we think those changes will be, but I bet we're only gonna be about half right. Therefore, it is important for you to influence the issues and the forces that will occur to include nursing at the forefront. Advocate for yourself, your patients, nursing, and all that you value. I have seen so many of you grow over the past few years. I told the January incoming baccalaureate class to stop and think about what they were feeling right at that moment, about starting the nursing program, and to remember it as I asked them again when they graduate to reflect on that moment and also on this moment right now. So take a moment and remember your first day here, what you thought and how you felt about where you might be today. Did you meet those dreams? Do you feel the same way as you thought you would back then? Are you a different person? Cherish why you became a nurse. For those that are graduates from the graduate program, 
Think back to when you were a baccalaureate student, that first day or that day you graduated, and when the world was your oyster. You are ready, all of you, to make a difference. In closing, I hope that through email or Facebook or Twitter or any other means that you continue to share your story with us. As an alumnus, you are part of the story of the College of Nursing forever. Your picture on our wall confirms that you were here. As for the graduate students, although we do not have a composite of your class, many pictures were taken of each of you to keep in our memory books. Next year, we will be celebrating our 60th year as a college. And I invite you back when we set the date for that celebration to honor this history in the collection of so many stories. I would like to end with a quote from an unknown person that has meant a lot to me. To the world, you are one person. But to one person, you are their world. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jason Nicholson, and on behalf of the assembled students and faculty, I welcome you to the pinning ceremony for the graduating class of 2013. Tomorrow, as you are all very well aware, is graduation. It's a day of celebration, a day of congratulations for a goal reached, a milestone achieved, and a new life's chapter begun. Tomorrow there'll be festivities, a little pomp and circumstance, and probably more than one or two tears of joy. Tonight, however, is a more solemn occasion. Tonight is a quiet moment we share among ourselves and those that are closest to us. Tonight is the calm before the storm. And in these last few moments of quiet calm, we stop now to reflect upon what we've all been called to do. We stop now in this quiet calm to internalize the awesome responsibility that we tonight accept for ourselves. And with the guidance and by the witness of our former teachers, now our peers, and the support of the loved ones we've gathered around us, we accept not just pins of gold and silver, but the charge of our dean, our school, and our profession. Dean Nearing has charged us as a group and individually to go forth from this place into the world of nursing and to advocate for our patients. Throughout our time here at ETSU, we've heard lots of definitions of what the word advocacy might mean. I love her definition of advocacy. It's short, it's thorough, it's easy to remember, and I bet I could find it on a multiple choice test. <laughs> However, for tonight, and possibly for your career, I propose a shorter definition. Advocacy. To give of oneself to others in a caring manner, through a thought, a word, or simply a deed. Once you say it out loud, it sounds kind of simple. Maybe even easy. However, this will require much. It will require all of the knowledge that has been bestowed upon us at our time here at East Tennessee State University. It will require our expertise in our chosen area of practice. And most of all, it will require an open heart, a dedication to give of ourselves to others, not just to our patients, but to those who love our patients and care for them. As a patient advocate, you will have the power to touch lives, and whether you realize it at the time or not, the people whose lives you touch, either directly as their advocate or indirectly as having served their loved one, will always remember the service that you provided for them. It is, of course, customary in speeches such as these to promise, or if delivered by a better speaker than myself, to even instill a sense of potential and the ability to affect change. I, unfortunately, am not a great speaker, but I do want you to know I genuinely believe in the power of giving of self to others and the ability of one person to change and touch the lives of many purely by the simple act of caring. More importantly, I believe that all of you have that ability. I've not prepared a spectacular example of great caring that forever changed the lives of many in one day. Occasionally you hear about that on the news or from friends. In truth, giving is a slow process. It is a thing that builds over time. Usually it takes years to even notice that it has occurred. And when you look back, you think, well, that was cool. 
Look how much good that person did. They didn't change the world, but they made a lot of people happy, and they did it just by giving. So by way of a very small example, and I don't expect there to be too many hands, but by way of a very small example, I would like for my classmates, if before tonight you have ever met my wife, if you could raise your hand. Just one person, that's right. That's kind of what I expected it to be. Now, I'd like for you to take just a second and raise your hand if despite the fact that you have never met my wife, that she has ever, it, to, to recognize and raise your hand if she has ever done something for you that you would like to say thank you for. <laughs> She's a special lady. I invite you to say thank you to her now if you care to. Thank you. Now, if one person can touch the lives of that many people, one person who has never met them can touch their lives in that way, imagine the effect that you are going to have every day on the lives of the patients and the families for which you will be advocating for during the most challenging times of their entire life. So to the families, the loved ones that are gathered here tonight, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done to advocate for us. We could not have achieved tonight without you. On behalf of my class, I wish to extend to the staff and faculty our collected gratitude for your advocacy, your patience, your tutelage, and your teaching. To Dean Nearing, I say we hear and accept your charge. We understand that as we accept this charge of advocacy for our patients in doing so, we pledge to give of ourselves to them, to ensure their dignity and their respect. We pledge to teach them, empower them, and to defend them to the best of our ability. Lastly, to the class of 2013, it has been an incredible journey, and I feel very fortunate to have shared it, to be with you, to have shared it with you. It's, uh, it's been a real pleasure and a privilege seeing each one of you grow into nurses. You all hold flowers in your hands, and I think that is very apropos, because we're all kind of like flowers, just a little bit. From our first days in the first semester in pathophysiology, when we were thrust out as seedlings on, uh, on the dirt and soil, the rich and fertile dirt and soil, um, we took root that first semester. And just like the flowers in the spring, we began to form shoots, small hints of the nurses we would all become. Since then we have grown, budded, and tonight bloomed. So here we are, all together. Some of us are roses, some of us daffodils. Of course, there's more than just a couple wildflowers out there. You know who you are. <laughs> you might say that tomorrow is harvest day. Tomorrow, we leave this little patch of ground and go forth to share our beauty with those we have all chosen to serve. I just wanted to let you know before the harvest that I will miss you all. And it has truly been an honor sort of walking through your garden. Congratulations to you all. Good night. Thank you. Good evening. Dr. Nairing, faculty and staff, fellow graduates, families, and friends. I'm honored to represent the graduate program of master's and doctoral students this evening. The journey of nursing graduate education, and even the decision to embark on this journey, is not always an easy one. I'd like to make a brief comparison to another adventure in life that I had the fortunate opportunity to try two years ago, and that was skydiving. Much like skydiving, when you start the adventure of graduate school, there may have been some that looked at you strangely, wondering why you would want to go back to school again, since you already have a job or a career. Some people definitely looked at me strangely, wondering why I would want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Of course, there were others that understood, family, faculty, that cheered you on, watched from the sidelines, and were excited about your decision. Then, once you start in graduate school, and even throughout the process, just like skydiving, you probably had a few panic moments of wanting to turn back, wanting to turn the plane around. 
Graduate school is definitely demanding at times. Many of us have families, children, full-time jobs, community and church responsibilities. The list is endless. So adding graduate school to already full lives is a bit of a balancing or juggling act. There are, fi there are times where it's very overwhelming. But somehow the inner voice calms you. You get encouragement from, from faculty, family, friends, and you realize the benefits, the excitement from learning and progressing and that you're close to the destination. It's almost time to jump out of the plane. Then finally, you make the jump. You continue through, complete your courses, finish exams, finish your clinical hours, and maybe that final capstone project. And you have finally landed at the finish line where we're at to graduation, and it feels great. Now, that's where the similarities between nursing and graduate education and skydiving end. While skydiving was a fun, thrilling experience for me, it was short-lived. And it really doesn't add any purpose or meaning to my life. However, nursing education and the profession I work in gives me a sense of purpose and helps define who I am. And I know that my fellow graduates feel that way too. So what's so special about nursing? I believe that the advocacy piece that Dr. Nairing speaks of is the core of nursing. It's a caring profession fueled by the desire to help patients and people in general. I remember my parents had a video of me in second grade, and I think I was asked um, what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I responded, the nurse. I don't remember the details that far back. I imagine that my desire to be a nurse came from the idea that it, it's always defined as a helping profession. Choosing to pursue a graduate nursing education is a major decision for nurses. While there are some personal goals with this, such as advancing your career or your place within an organization, I know that the main reason we make this choice is to develop better ways to treat our patients and serve others, which ties into that important, important advocacy role for nurses. Our journey into graduate education has been exciting. Those of you in the master's program have learned and developed further clinical skills to become, uh, to become advanced practice nurses and also leaders among nurses. And three of us in the DMP program already practice as nurse practitioners. And we made this journey to learn new ways of thinking at a systems level, to develop knowledge and research and leadership that we can apply to our practices. We also had the support from wonderful faculty in our journey to help us through this process. The advanced practice skills and knowledge we've gained from our educational experience is something we'll take with us forever as we continue on an even longer and more exciting journey as nursing professionals. Thank you all, and congratulations. Thank you for those two extraordinary responses. And now the moment the graduates have been waiting for. The diploma you receive on Saturday symbolizes your academic achievement and is a declaration that you have met the educational criteria set forth by your profession and the university. Tonight, the pin you received symbolizes your loyalty to and pride in your College of Nursing. Our candidates for the DNP degree will also be honored tonight and will be hooded. They will also be recognized tomorrow at the commencement ceremony. We have several groups of graduates and only one set of hands can physically place the pin, but know that all of your faculty are placing their many wishes for happiness and success along with the symbol tonight. For our DMP graduates, their capstone chair will hood their student. And now Dr. Smith will present the graduates. As you leave the stage, Vicki Gregg from the College of Nursing Alumni Society will present you with an invitation to join the organization. Graduates, I'll ask you to please come forward as directed by the ushers to receive your pins.
You did that. Let's try it from here. Thank you. That was Jason S. Nicholson. Thank you so much, Dr. Noland. Jessica D. Anderson. Aaron Austin, BSN. Aaron is an honors and discipline student. Dr. Joellen Edwards is her advisor. Her thesis was self-management of diabetes in low-income Appalachian women. Mary T. Bar Barberry, BSN. Elizabeth T. Blair, SNA member, BSN. <laughs> Jaina K. Blevins, BSN. <laughs> Leslie C. Brown, BSN. Anna M. Buki, BSN. <laughs> Stephanie L. Bundren, SNA member, BSN. <laughs> Katie L. Butcher, BSN. Katie E. Beard, BSN. <laughs> Catherine M. Cole, SNA member, BSN. Lauren E. Couch, BSN. Yeah. Megan A. Davis, BSN. Yeah. Christopher A. Earp, BSN. A. Jordan English, BSN. <laughs> Chelsea A. Fagan, BSN. Aaron A. Faust, BSN. Suzanne K. Faust, BSN. <laughs> Natasha Y. Gons, BSN. <laughs> Jonas J. Gonzalez, BSN. Amanda D. Harder, BSN. <laughs> D. 
Deborah G. Hodge, BSN. Carly Hutchins. Carly is an honors and discipline student with Professor Kim Sell as her advisor. Title of her thesis is Balance and Gate Among a Community Dwelling Older Population Using Nintendo Wii Bowling Game. <laughs> Jessica H. Engel, BSN. Marie G. Jacobs, BSN. <laughs> Duck Chal Kim, BSN. Adam L. Kincaid, BSN. <laughs> Tracy C. Lagerblade, BSN. <laughs> Matthew D. Lee, BSN. Brittany S. Lewis, BSN. <laughs> Kristen N. Looney, BSN. SN <laughs> Carly M. Lauterbach, BSN. Kayla M. Majors, BSN. <laughs> Caitlin Malcolm, BSN. Caitlin is Honors and Discipline Students. Dr. Pearl Ume Nangwabo is her advisor. Title of her thesis is Perceptions of Cultural Competency Among Nursing Students. Lauren Milhorn Erb, BSN. Brad Moore, BSN. Brad is an Honors and Discipline student with Professor Francis Jackson as his advisor. The title of his thesis is Test Anxiety in Nursing Students. <laughs> Tiffany D. Morgan, BSN. Bobby A. Morton, BSN. <laughs> Abby v. v. Mullins, BSN. Jennifer D. Muncy, BSN. <laughs> Jamie A. Nave, BSN. <laughs> Kayla P. Owens, BSN. Holly M. Parkinson, BSN. <laughs> Ka 
Catherine E. Pedzawal, BSN. Sierra E. Phelps, BSN. Lauren E. Ramsey, SNA member, BSN. Chelsea N. Reagan, BSN. Geneva Record, SNA member, BSN. Geneva is honors and uh, university honors scholar, Midway honors scholar, and Professor Joy Walks is her advisor. The title of her thesis is Stress Relief Habits and Perceived Stress Among College Nursing Students. <laughs> Derek S. Reedy, BSN. <laughs> Ashley R. Renault, BSN, SNA member. <laughs> Brittany J. Renner, BSN. <laughs> Karen K. Rose, BSN. Christopher E. Rosalot, BSN. Bridget Shanahan, BSN. Jessica R. Shoemake, SNA member, BSN. Lauren N. Simmerly, BSN. <laughs> Erica R. Sluss, BSN. <laughs> Tara A. Smalling, BSN. Caleb A. Smith, BSN. <clears throat> Vincent J. Spencer, BSN. Jessica Stamey, BSN. Jessica is honors and discipline student. Dr. Sandy Diffenderfer is her advisor. Title of her thesis is Nursing Students' Perception of Uncivil Behavior in the Classroom Setting. <laughs> Amber L. Street, BSN. Brennan S. Sutton, BSN. <laughs> Rebecca L. Thompson, BSN. <laughs> Shannon C. Tipton, BSN. Kimberly F. Wheeler, BSN. <laughs> Allison L. Williams, SNA member, BSN.
Joshua A. Williams, BSN. Alexis P. Wilson, BSN. Jennifer L. Wilson, BSN. <laughs> Natalia Winborn, BSN. <laughs> Heather M. Winkle, SNA member, BSN. Eli L. Woods, BSN. <laughs> Jessica D. Yearwood, SNA member, BSN. Melissa Hatfield, MSN. <laughs> Sherry Shepard, MSN. <laughs> Jennifer M. Boggs, DNP. <laughs> Jennifer's advisor is Dr. Joellen Edwards. The title of her capstone was Exploring Patients' Perceptions of Weight Gain as Barrier to Medication Adherence in Adults with Serious Mental Illness Taking Atypical Antipsychotic Medication. <laughs> Rhonda Hensley, DNP. Rhonda's advisor is Dr. Masood Ghaffari. The title of her capstone is The Effects of Healing Touch on Pain at Inpatient Hospice Setting. Let's give these graduates a round of applause. Nursing graduates, this is a time filled with opportunities. You're joining a profession that's expected to experience the largest growth of any occupation through the year 2020. Despite this growth, the need remains great for practice at all levels. For care providers, nurse educators, nurse researchers, nurse administrators, and nurse leaders. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics projects that nearly 1.2 million new and replacement nurses will be needed by 2020. The availability of nursing positions is supported <clears throat> by the results of a survey of these BSN graduates. Even three weeks before completing the program, approximately half of the graduates reported they had already secured a position in nursing. For the 11th year in a row, nursing was recently voted the most trusted of the professions. 85% of Americans identified nurses as the most honest and having the highest ethical standards of all professions. That's a lot to live up to, but we know you can count on you to be part of the continuing trend into the future. Quality care depends on the best and the brightest to make it real. Our patients, the public, and one day you and I need you to be that highest quality nurse for all of your patients. 
As you join the millions of professional nurses practicing at all levels, let your voices be heard for quality, safety, and improved health outcomes. We also ask that you keep in touch. Let us know the exciting things you do, your professional accomplishments, steps you take for advancing your career and the profession. Take an active part in your alumni organization and remember in a few years to help support those new graduate nurses who come behind you. Congratulations, our very best wishes to you and your families. We now invite your, you to be our guests for refreshments which are set up outside the lobby as we celebrate achievement of your graduations. Thank you and good night.